Hi, I'm Rosie Grant, Executive Director of Patterson Education Fund. Welcome to the 2018 Patterson School Board Candidates Forum, sponsored by Patterson Education Fund. We thank the Patterson PTO leadership for supporting this effort with volunteers and Patterson Public Schools for hosting us. PEF, the PTO, and Patterson Public Schools are not endorsing any of the candidates, but rather providing an opportunity for you to get to know them and their views. Good evening, my name is Nellie Selly. I am 10K on the ballot. Thank you to PEF and all of you for coming out and taking the time to hear the candidates and what, are, what we bring to the table, because that is the most important. You are the voters, and without you, um, it's gonna be difficult to have the right candidates there. I currently work as the outreach coordinator at the State Community College, working with high school students who are remedial in math and English, meaning that I have high school students who are in fifth grade reading, fourth grade math, which is unacceptable if you graduate from one of our high schools. Unacceptable, and that's one of the reasons that I'm running. Once again, my name is Nellie Selly, and my ballot number is 10K. Thank you. So now let's delve into the questions. First question. Patterson is just beginning the two-year process of returning to local control. What will you do as a member of the school board to facilitate a smooth transition and prevent future takeovers? Moving the district forward is going to be very important. How do you do that? I look at it this way. We're building a house. <coughs> We're going to lay bricks. And every brick is an area of concern, an area that needs to be addressed. You cannot build a house of cards because it will collapse. And at times we have that in different areas. We have concerns with the reading, the math, um, the children not at grade level, special needs, the lunches, teachers not having the supplies that they need, um, the park, the, the taking the recovery credits. We're letting them graduate, we're back to square one. They don't really know the material. That's not helping them. What we need to do is, you need, we all need to elect individuals that have the expertise, the experience, the desire, and the passion, and areas of expertise that will help bring a brick and build a strong foundation that will be here long after us, and that we will never lose control again. We need to be focused, and everybody needs, there's numerous areas, and you cannot address just one. You need to address all of them at the same time. That means everybody's got to pull together, work together, figure out their focus, and address it. Address the issues, do not be afraid of it. There's fiscal, there's operations, there's the classrooms, everything. You cannot just say we're going to focus on one area and we'll worry about the rest later. That's not going to work. Um, we have to be conscious of what we're doing. Ab chronic absenteeism is a problem. It starts at preschool. We have the dropout rates. The park. We need to increase. When we put in place anything, we need to make sure that we have the infrastructure to support it. Putting in when the park went live, we didn't have the infrastructure. Things were crashing. Kids couldn't address, you know, get on, log on. There's so many different issues. The infrastructure is important. If you don't have an infrastructure, you're back to the house of cards. We need a strong foundation with bricks made of cement, built with the expertise, the passion, and the desire, and, and the experience of the commissioners. Thank you. Next question. The state increased school funding by $20 million for this fiscal year, but the total still falls short of what our children are entitled to under the law. What is your role in ensuring that our children get adequate resources? Yes, um, the $280 million we have been short. And as I look at it, we're not getting that money back. That money has been reallocated. I don't think the state has it in a piggy bank and is going to give it to us whenever we play nice. So we have to look at what we're going to get. We got $20 million this year. What can we actually say we're going to ask for next year? We can't ask for the 280. That's not happening. So what can you ask for? Can we ask for 20? Can we ask for 30? Can we ask for 40? And then let's give them a plan of what that money will be used for and how it fits the funding formula. The other thing is that funding formula is outdated. We need to go back and look and revisit it. Because cities like Jersey City are receiving a certain amount of money. When this formula was created and adopted, Jersey City has come up a long ways. They have beautiful sky rises. Their economy has uh, flourished. They're no longer in need like they were. Patterson is still in need. And before Mayor Say it gets us up to Jersey City status or better, we better get on board and advocate. <coughs> and advocate does not mean one day in the year we go down and speak to legislators. It's talking to who knows who, who knows who, who knows someone that we can show up to a dinner and go, hi, you know, we're the Patterson Board of Education and we really need your help. We need you to help us out here. And this is the reason why. 
It's building relationships, advocating. But it has to be a constant. And you have to have a plan for what you're asking for. We don't have the money. We can't dwell on it. We have to plan. What do we have? Let's work on what we can do with what we have. If we keep saying, well, we don't have it, so we can't do it, then we're never going to go anywhere. We have to work within what our limits. So let's plan. Let's advocate. Let's create. Creating a plan is number one. Back to the foundation. Creating a game plan and then benchmarks on how we're going to get there. Thank you. Ready for the next question? <laughs> I apologize for that. In today's environment, our children experience trauma on a daily basis. What are some policies that could help to ensure that they are safe in and out of school while also providing social and emotional support? Our children face challenging times every day. Um, I hear stories where they're homeless. You know, they're living in a park. They're going from house to house. They haven't had anything to eat. Those are things that break your heart every time you hear it, no matter how many times you hear it. Teachers, staff, at every level need to know that these are some of the challenges our students face. They're too young to be facing and No one should ever have to face that. But it's going to take a village, not just a school district, not just a parent, to make a change and make a difference after school programs. One of the always live by, every child and every person has a story to tell. We need to know what that story is. Don't say the little girl in the pink shoes, don't say the little boy with the Iron Man shirt, Annie. Um, you know, that was just an inside joke. Uh, so get to know them. Don't put a label on them and say, well, he or she is bad because you know they're acting up. Why are they acting out? Yes, it's tough as a teacher when you have 30 students in there. But I know that teachers care, and I know we have teachers that love our kids and are here to teach them, not just book-wise, but to also help them as a whole person. So we need to find ways to empower those teachers to help the whole student and the whole family. Families are going to come together when we don't make it seem like they're being a bad parent. No one's going to come and go, you're a bad parent because your child liked it up. No one's coming to that. We would not be going to something like that. Make it inviting. Make it friendly. Make it familiar when no one's being judged but we're saying we're here to help we want to help you we want to help your child because they can succeed and they are our future we need to make sure that the researchers are in place once again the infrastructure everyone is going to have to jump in both feet get dirty get your hands dirty and help otherwise this will continue will not change and we cannot allow the cycle to continue it's time to break the cycle now thank you Next question. Describe your view of the roles of the school board and the superintendent. What is the ideal relationship between these two offices? And how will you allocate the time needed to truly fulfill your role? Let's start with Ms. Selly. The school board and the administration should be one. You work hand in hand towards a common goal with respect, always with respect. Speaking honestly, if you don't agree with something, say it, but in a nice way. We don't need to be, you know, being disrespectful because we don't accomplish anything. Find the common goals. There's always a middle point. Find the middle point to address an issue and resolve the issue instead of just bickering because one doesn't like it or the other doesn't like it. Find the middle ground. It's always about compromise. It's, fine. it's always about making the pieces fit, one way or the other. Look at everything. The role of the, the, the board members is simple. You need to advocate for the parents, the students, the families, and work with the superintendent and their administration. Find out what their needs are. We're volunteers. Essentially, we're volunteers. We can't be in the school district every day because that's not our role. But the only way you find out what's truly happening and what everybody really needs is to ask them directly. What do you need to do your job? How can I help you gain those tools or, or training so that you can do your job better? or you know with less uh, wasteful time or whatever it may be that's one way of doing it how will I make the time if you want to make the time you will otherwise you'll make excuses I can't because of this or that I will make the time because otherwise I would not be here at 9 o'clock at night with my colleagues you know uh, waiting because then it's not it's, it's waste it's a waste of time and I'm not here to waste my time or your time so I will be here all in, 110%. They might get tired of me asking questions, but it's for the benefit of everybody, because only by asking questions will you have answers, and only then can you address issues. You can't address them any other way unless you actually know and you ask those that are directly involved. Thank you. 
<laughs> First audience question. If elected, what will be your main focus to create policy that benefits the ethnic diversity and cultures in our school district? Let's start with Mr. Eugene. Thank you, Chair. Um, to a policy, like Manny said, it can be challenging, but one of the things you, I would want to see is a policy where teachers um, trains professional staff so that they know how to approach, um, deal with the not just the children, but the parents, the family members, the guardians of the children. You have to start with the staff first because they're the ones working with these children and teaching them on a daily basis, and they need to have the tools necessary if so that they're prepared and they know how to talk to the kids, talk to the parents, that's step one. Um, also, I would like to see the rich history of Patterson. Patterson didn't just start now with the diversity. It's been going on since the founding of Patterson. So let's make sure that our children know the rich history, the diverse rich history of Patterson. Let them gain some pride. The other thing is we need to have programs <coughs> within the schools um, and activity clubs within the classrooms of teaching children to just get to know each other on a different level. Because if they sat down and really talked to one another, they find out they don't have that much. They have a lot in common. If anybody saw the Freedom Writers, anybody see the Freedom Writers? Okay. The teacher was having this issue with the, the classroom. They were all didn't get along, they were fighting, you're this, you're that, you have black hair, I have blonde hair, I don't like you. End of the story. So what did she do? She drew a line, she took some tape, put it right down the middle of the classroom. Everyone that comes lives on Fifth Street on this side. Everyone has comes from a single parent, go to that side. What did they find out? They had more in common than not. And that's something we need to do on a daily basis, is help our children, our families, ourselves learn. And how do you do that? Talking. Just by simply talking. And saying, hey, yeah, I'd like to do that. We look at our foods, a lot of it are kind of like the same. Yes, you know, so let's take that and build on it instead of making it an issue. If children don't know differently unless we tell them. They have no limits, they don't see blue, green, yellow, purple unless we tell them. So let's not tell them, but let's just tell them we are one and we're here working towards a common goal. Thank you. Next question from the audience. With the current cuts in the after school programs at the federal level, what kind of safeguards will you put in place to make sure our kids get offered programs? After school programs are essential to any student. One, it helps the parents if they can't pick up their children at three o'clock, which is a lot of parents. So, but we need to provide a safe place. It needs to be consistent. It needs to be nurturing. They need to know that child's story when they come in every day. I know you, I know you, not just by what you wear or that you have a label on you. I know you. Um, saying that, we're, Patterson is not just rich and diverse, we have numerous not-for-profit non organizations and churches, and each one of them has a specialty. If we tap into those specialties, we won't have to rely on the federal government to give us what we already have. Reach out to those, if, if you're a basketball program, hey, what can you do for us? You're in our city, we need the village. You're part of that village. Return on investment again. So what do they have, what can they offer to us? After school should be fun. Kids should be learning. Learning should be fun. It shouldn't be like, oh man, I have to go back to that class again. No, they've been in school all day. Let's teach them in a way they don't even realize they're learning or they're in school. A drama class where they write their own stories. They think they're just telling us who they are and what they're doing, but they're reading, they're writing, their grammar is improving. They don't realize it, but those are some of the things that we can do. It should be fun. Serving on the library and board museum, we're developing programs, free programs at this point, for, for our students for the after school programs. It's in the development stages, but we'll have that. We're gonna partner with the Patterson Board of Education because we are here to help each other out. Remember, it's a village. We're all here, everybody's gotta step up to the plate and say, how can I help? And, if they, and I'm sure that if you ask anybody in Patterson, someone's gonna say, I can do this, I can do that. Because everyone loves the kids and we know that the future is there. Thank you. That's about all the time we have for audience questions. At this time, I would like to give the candidates up to one minute to make a closing statement. Once again, my name is Nellie Selly. I am uh, on ballot number 10K. Why me? Well, that's, uh, how can I say this easily? 
I'm here because I want to be. No one's making me. I choose to be here. For over 20 years, I've worked in the district, working with the students, families, because it is my passion. Serving on boards such as the state EOF, the library and, and, and museum, Habitat for Humanity, has offered me the opportunity to learn what a board does firsthand, how to come up, how to write policies, how to institute them. And working on boards, you realize what you need. Every brick, it's building a house. So you have to decide what kind of house you're gonna build. For this legacy, this board, and the future ones to come, we'll continue to build on that foundation. And if we don't have a strong, concrete foundation, we will crumble and go back to local control. So this election, like every election, is important and vital. And you need to make the right decision for the right reasons. And choose carefully. Nelly Selly, 10K, thank you. This concludes our last panel. I want to thank all of our candidates. And at this time, I want to turn it over to our president of the Patterson Education Fund, Rosie Mayer. Thank you again, Judge Brown. Can we give her a hand? She's been standing for three hours. Thank you. Thank you, candidates, for being here tonight and for presenting yourself on the Patterson Board of Education. Thank you, audience. You've been a great audience. Thank you for being here. Thank you to our viewing audience. Remember, again, that this is one of three sessions, so please be sure to watch all three. Everyone remember tomorrow is the last day to register to vote in New Jersey, and the election is November 6th. Don't forget to vote in the school board section of your ballot. Please pay attention to the entire ballot, answer the, the referendum question, type two, and vote in the school board section. Thank you so very much. Okay. Thank you to our volunteers and our videographer. Please turn in your evaluation sheets. Thank you.